Hi everyone, today I am going to give my third hop lesson for King Jesus Ministry and uh, the message is God will do it again. I know it's not a Bible tale, um, but I'm including this in my YouTube channel. So I want to start with the book of Psalms. I, by the way, I love this message. I'm super passionate about this message. It's about testifying, the power of the testimony. And the reason I'm so passionate about this message is because this is one of one of the things that generates souls for the kingdom of God. The same way that sales is what generates, um, I mean, the sales team is what generates sales, really, of a product and a company and a business. You know, testifying and an evangelist is what generates souls in the kingdom of God. So I am in love with this message. If you go to the book of Psalm 78, 5 through 6, it says, For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, and they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they might arise and declare them to their children. So he's saying the intention of God was so that the Israelites can testify to their children the works and the things that God did for them, right? So if it, it, this is the thing. Israel was full of great victories. God, I mean, if you look at all the things that God did when, when Moses told Pharaoh, God says, let my people go and, and Pharaoh didn't want to let him go and the plagues that took place and even the even to the little to the little details, because if you think about it, those Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years. They're, they didn't go buy new shoes. Their shoes, the Bible literally says that the shoes, their shoes, the size of their shoe would grow with their feet. And when their feet would grow, their shoe size would grow. So talk about miracles, like God was to the T, manna falling from heaven, like bread falling from heaven, everything that God did. And, and God says, I want you to testify. This is why God would say, I want there to be this celebration and this and that, because the celebrations is like, why are we celebrating? Oh, because this celebration represents this. It would be for remembrance. Now, what happened is that people, sadly, with the passing of time, people slowly forget to testify about the things that God has done. And then what happens is that their generations forget and there's no credibility. There's no credible witnesses. There's nothing to determine God did this or God did that. So now the children of, of those people, they don't know who their God is. They don't even know who they're serving. So it's easy for them to go after false things because they don't even know who their God is. So um, we're going to talk today about testifying because it is one of the biggest pillars uh, that allows us to sustain revival of the move of God. It's our responsibility to decide to tell others what God has done in our lives and for us. So what is a testimony? A testimony is the bold, audacious, written or spoken declaration of what God has done. Okay, so each time we testify of God's greatness, he endorses what we say and creates the atmosphere in which new miracles and blessings can take place once more. It is a powerful thing to understand that each time we declare a testimony of healing, finances, restoration of the family or deliverance, the right atmosphere for the miracle to repeat itself is created so that it can take place in the life of the person who hears it. If we go to the book, because this is what I'm going to explain what I just said. If we go to the book of Revelation 19.10, it says, For the spirit of prophecy is who bears witness of Jesus. So the spirit of prophecy is the one who bears witness of Jesus. So the spirit of prophecy, what is the spirit of prophecy? What is prophecy? Prophecy is that you're prophesying when you, for example, if I prophesy, oh, I see that I prophesy that you, God says that you're going to have a kid. You're going to have a baby boy. And then the person is like, what are you talking about? I'm not pregnant. And then a week later she finds out, Hey, look, I'm pregnant. And then when they found out the gender, oh, it's a baby boy. So that's prophecy. So it says that the spirit of, uh, of prophecy bears witness of Jesus. So what does that mean? That means, and I'm going to, and I'm going to show you guys, if God did something for you, for example, if God, if I know that God gave me a financial breakthrough, God did a financial breakthrough for my life. And I see that someone is struggling financially. And I tell them, look, God can, God did this and this and this and this for me. And I know he can do it for you. What I'm doing is I'm sowing a seed of hope into that person because now they're saying, wait, if God did it for you, then he can do it for me. And then it's like, wait, but God is, then what you're saying is that God is not dead, but that God is really alive. And if God can produce miracles and he's going to do it for me, and then God does it for that person. Now what happens is that I kind of prophesy to that person that that was going to take place in that person's life. Because had I not talked to that person, that thing would have never happened. So what you're doing is that you are causing, you're giving God the opportunity to do it again. That's why it's 
Jesus, do it again. Testifying, you're saying, God, do it again. You did it yesterday. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's what the word of God says. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he did it for me today and he is no respecter of person, he can do it for you. Okay? So if you go to Romans 10, 14, it says, oh, I have to read this. Romans 10, 14. I'm going to read it from the Bible. It says, but how are people to call upon him who they have not believed in? whom they have no faith and whom they have no reliance. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? So the Bible says, how, how, how are people going to call on God when nobody ever talks to them about God? They don't know who God is. And, you know, and, and, you know, there's too many people that have the, that have the answers that know God and are quiet. And it's like, this is, it, to me, it's selfish because it's like if you have a medicine, if you have the cure for cancer and you know someone has cancer and, and you have the medicine and you got cured of cancer, why would you not give that medicine to someone else struggling with it? Why? Because you're afraid that they're going to reject the medicine? Why? Because you're afraid that they're going to that, that they're gonna think that, that it's offensive because they're going to be like, oh, what are you trying to say, that I need healing? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. You do need healing, you know, and I don't care to offend you because I love you. And when you love someone, you care more about the love than the offense. And the Bible says God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind. So if you really, if you go back in the Bible, when you hear, when Jesus goes to the woman in the world, a Samaritan woman, and he starts prophesying to her and he says, look, go bring your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And he says, you said right by saying you don't have a husband because you have five and none of them are your husband. And she says, well, I perceive you're a prophet. When they finish that conversation that he tells her about the worship, that the true worshiper is worship in spirit and in truth, and it's not about a place and all of this, she goes back and she tells everyone, hey, I met a man that he does not know me. And he told me everything about my life. And it says that these people came to hear Jesus because of what she testified they were like man we want to know this man and when they went to him they said look we heard about you but now we believe because now we see with our own eyes so because of a woman who testified all what she did was she testified what jesus did and because of that she brought souls into the kingdom of god so when you testify there's power in testimony that's why the enemy wants you to keep your your mouth quiet um if you look at the 10 lepers, what happened with the 10 lepers? They went to Jesus, they wanted healing. And Jesus says, go to, go to the priest, you know, get, you'll, you'll get clean. And, and it says that when they all got healed, only one came back to Jesus. Only one came back to testify to Jesus. Yes, I got healed and thank you and to give thanks to Jesus. And what was Jesus' answer to him? He said, were there not 10 of you? He goes, where are the other nine? Like, why, 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 why if God does so many powerful miracles and he does so many things in our lives do we keep quiet about it why do we not give him the praise that he deserves you know i love to testify bro when god does something in my life i pick up the phone and i tell everyone no god did this and god did that. i love to boast about what god did and i think that that's why he gives me more because he's like man here i want you to continue to boast about me i want you to continue to show people how awesome i am you know I have a I have a friend that I actually did a video of, of the of the finances and the sewing last week and I and I sent it to her and she she was like man Sandra she was like this is crazy because I was feeling in my heart to sow a seed she was like and and I felt like it was God she goes and when you sent me that video it was confirmation she goes I went ahead and I did that and I had something that was stopping me in an area of my life where I would get so much persecution and, and I I needed a breakthrough and I couldn't and I couldn't she goes and I prayed about it and I said God I'm gonna sow in faith she goes and as soon as I did that and I went back and and I was going to go fight to get the victory. She goes, it was, they told me, oh, you have nothing to worry about. We'll resolve that for you right now. She was like, I've been fighting with this for years. She goes, and I couldn't get a breakthrough. She goes, now all I did was I obeyed God and, and, and God gave me the breakthrough. She was crying. She was like, man, I forgot how awesome God is. Like how, not how awesome God is, but how, how fast he is and how quick he is to answer his people when, when we obey him, you know, he wants obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, I have so many testimonies. I can testify. My cousin wanted a house. I'm a realtor, by the way. My cousin wanted a house and she told me, Sandra, it has to be like this, like this, like this, like this. Very specific, like very, very, very specific. And there was no house like what she wanted for the price that she wanted in the area that she wanted. No association. It couldn't be a two, uh, uh, it couldn't be a two story, everything. And, and, and I was like, man, God, I need you to put this house in the market. Like there has to be this house by tomorrow in the market. I need you to do this for me, please. The next day I go online, the house was there. And I was like, God, we need to get this house. We made an offer. We got the house my cousin got the house and not only was it everything that i had that my cousin told me that she wanted that i had told god but god is so beautiful that when we went to the house she was, she was like sandra i didn't tell you this because i wasn't gonna i didn't even think that there was gonna be a house like this but she goes i've always wanted a pond she goes this house has a pond i've always wanted this type of roof she goes this this house has this type of roof i've always wanted an extra sink in the garage like because a lot of garages don't have sinks she goes i've always wanted a sink in the garage she goes and this house has a sink in the garage and i was like bro god is so beautiful that even the things that she did not ask me for to the t he was manifest 
manifesting and showing her how much he loves her by being so detailed with her. And he gave her the house that she wanted. You know, I remember one time I was, I needed money. I I, I needed, I needed exactly a thousand dollars. And I was like, man, God, I don't know how you're going to do this, but I need money to date. Like I need a breakthrough. And I remember that my, my ex broker called me and he was like, Sandra, he was like, you have a check in the office. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, you don't owe me any money. And he was like, yeah, you don't remember this deal and this and this and this. And I was like, no, I remember that. And I go, and I remember that I did that to help out for free. And he was like, no, you don't remember that we came into an agreement. And I was like, look, if you have a check for me in the office, hold it for me. I'll be right there i'm not gonna argue with you you know like if god is giving me the money i'm i'm gonna get it and I, and i didn't even ask how much it was and when i went to the office and i looked it was exactly a thousand dollars so you know so i've seen god do miracles in my life left and right and i love to boast about my god i love to boast about my god because why would i hold something back from someone else like if i know god did it for me and god is no respecter of person then god wants to do it for someone else why would i why would i steal that blessing from them so today what i want to tell you is if, if you know god has done something in your life don't keep don't keep quiet about it you know talk to people about tell people what christ has done in your life and if you said sandra god has not i really i haven't seen anything happen in my life do you have a relationship with him and if you don't establish one you know c c commit yourself to god you know give surrender to jesus christ and then watch him do crazy miracles in your life he's able to heal he did it when he was on earth and he never intended for it to stop some people say no that was that was back when jesus and that was back when the apostles no god established the government of the kingdom of god he says i i i called apostles prophets evangelists teachers pastors he didn't do it just for that time he did it because he wants his kingdom to be established but the devil is a deceiver and a liar and you can't believe his lies so talk to people about what god has done in your life and if you don't know jesus accept him tell him god i surrender to you jesus i accept you in my life i need you i want you and watch him restore your marriage watch him you know give you financial breakthrough heal your the, your body of sicknesses you know heal maybe your child if your child needs needs healing and when he does this don't stay quiet when he does this go and 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 so hope into other people and tell other people what god is doing because god is always at work God is always at work. But if God doesn't just heal everyone just to heal everyone, because if not, nobody would need healing. If not, we wouldn't live in a sinful nature. And it's not that he doesn't want to. It's that we live in a fallen world. And that's because humans decided to sin against God and to rebel against God. God gives us free will. He would not go against your free will. And he says, what you allow on earth, I allow in heaven. What you don't allow on earth, I don't allow in heaven. He is a gentleman. So if you say, man, God, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't want to live this sinful life anymore. I want you in my life. I want you to cleanse me. I want you to come in my life. I want a life filled with you, God. He will do it. He's waiting. He's passionately waiting for you to surrender to him. The Bible says that his will is that no one will perish, but that everyone will be saved. So I hope you received. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.